Joining me now is the patriarch of the uh, Basil family of dealerships, Joe Basil, who is the honorary Commodore for this year's tall ships that are coming in to Buffalo. Joe, welcome. Good to see you here. Tell me, what does it mean to be the honorary Commodore? What an honor. Well, it's, it's a pleasure is what it is, and, and it's, uh, this is going to be a historic event for the city of Buffalo and the people of western New York. Uh, it's uh, probably the first time anything this big has ever hit the city, and it is going to attract people from all over uh, to see 10 of these ships in our harbor that you can go on. You can ride on them if you want to buy a ticket, but uh, the, the interesting thing is that it's the city of Buffalo is going to be honored, and this will be historic. It will be around the world. So that's what it means, and everybody from all walks of life uh, can come and see what, what is, uh, these tall ships are about. Now this is going to be around July 4th to the 7th, and this is going to be right in downtown Buffalo, right? In the area where you grew up. Oh boy, yep. My grandparents came here. Um, paternal grandfather came from England, uh, didn't know anybody, but he was a, a carpenter, a plumber, electrician, a volunteer fireman. Um, he was among the very first paid firemen, professional, when the city of Buffalo uh, was incorporated. And uh, the Buffalo fire boat that's in our harbor. The Cotter? He worked on the Cotter, it was called the Grattan in those really? days. Really? Um, he worked on that boat, and that boat's still there. When I get on it and I touch a rail that he touched, I step on a step that he stepped down. Uh, my father also became a fireman, battalion chief, and he was on that boat, and he took me on the boat. So the boat means a lot to, to me, to our family, and uh, it's still operating. And so uh, my maternal grandparent, uh, Michael J. Quinn came to Buffalo from Ireland, didn't know a soul, he had no money. Uh, in fact, he didn't even speak English. Uh, he spoke Gaelic. Uh -huh. And if you want to have a puzzle or tongue tire, <laughs> You have one there. I can't even pronounce, when I read Gaelic, I can't even pronounce it. But uh, he became a successful uh, businessman with a, with a boarding house and a bar. And uh, he actually was the organizer and the Grand Marshal, the first Grand Marshal of the St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day, Patrick's Day Parade. Right. And that parade is still going on. Unbelievable and heritage. We, believe now, this it or is, not, this believe is, it or yeah. not, uh, our grandchildren and great-grandchildren participate in the parade. That, what a legacy. So, isn't that great? What a legacy. Now, this is going to be great fun for parents to bring their kids down also to let them see the boats as well. Good family fun. It, it will be, and the, the boats will be available for the, anybody to go on. Uh, if you want to take a ride on one, you have to buy a ticket, but that, that won't cost too much money. But it, that might be fun to see uh, how they uh, man these ships. The tall ships, actually, they are a training venue for people, um, and they are all up, up and down the lakes and uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great for our area. Joe, your family is so well respected in the Western New York area. Uh, the entrepreneurship that you have coming out of, uh, you know, from your, your years as a young man in Buffalo, you have lived the American dream and still are. I know you wanted to talk a little bit about the American dream. Well, you know, uh, it's, it, it, it's kind of inbred, I think. And uh, my grandparents came here because they had a dream. And I had a dream. And I was very lucky to be able to bring it to fruition. And uh, look what happened. It's, uh, it's based on integrity and, and hard work. And uh, uh, the definition of success is when preparation and opportunity meet. But many people fail to see it because it's, dis it's dis disguised as hard work. And it just, uh, I never worked hard. I really didn't. I loved doing what I was doing. Uh, I still do. In fact, my sons tell me, yeah, yeah, get out of here, you know. <laughs> but um, I complain and tell them about something. And, uh, but God bless them. They learned.
they learned and they did a fantastic job. But uh, it's all about people. It's not about selling cars. It's all about people and the people, the most valuable asset that we have uh, as an employer are our people. And we have great people. We have families working in our dealerships now. Besides, we have about five of our grandchildren working in there. And of course, they all start out at minimum wage. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I know that you are so honored to be the Commodore this year. What would you say to the folks at home that are know that July 4th is coming around to get them to come down and see these amazing tall ships? Well, you got to come down and be part of the celebration, be part of the heritage, be part of the history. Bring your family down, but you will not regret it. It will be a lot of fun and it will, there's something there for everybody. So be sure to come, be part of the history. I know you wanted to say something also about the first ward, uh, which you uh, are very close to, and some of the folks that have come out of the first ward also. It was uh, rough and tumble maybe growing up, but so many have be, been so successful. Well, yeah, and it's a lot of other families, not just our family alone. There's a lot of stories out there uh, that um, maybe have not had the opportunity to be exposed as we have, but uh, um, I, I think about a lot of, I, I could go on and on with that because once you start, you don't finish and uh, uh, they're out there. The stories are there. A lot of successful people came out of there. And besides living the American dream, what other, as a Commodore, people look up to you, a person who's given back so much to this local community. What would you say to some of the younger folks that may be watching this also about how important it is that they give back to their local community as well? Mm -hmm. Well, we've been very blessed. Our family has been very blessed. And as I, I told our children when we were moving along, we were, grew up with our children. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you can't just take, you gotta give back. And it, you never regret anything that you give because it will come back uh, threefold to you. And it's always with good faith and it's, uh, uh, I had that uh, Jesuit education where you become a man for others. And it's something that uh, is not, you don't sit in a classroom and learn it. You learn it by being there. You don't even realize you're learning it, but you do. And when you have that, uh, that attitude of a man for others, it just, it, it just passes on. And uh, uh, it's, it's, we now have our 16th <laughs> Basil at Canisius High School, a little, <laughs> little plug for Canisius High School, but uh, it was wonderful. I know you and your incredible wife who's not here today are so proud of all of your children and your grandchildren living the American dream and continuing to give back to the local community. That's true, and you know they say behind every man is a woman? Yes. Well, that's, in my case, that's not true. <laughs> My girl, my Cheryl, was at my side all the time. Never in back of me, ever. So. She was a real partner. Oh my God, to this day, yes. Without her, I wouldn't even be sitting in this chair. Well, Joe, you are the American dream. You have <laughs> lived it, you continue to live it, and so do your children, and from all of us here, congratulations on being the Commodore. What would be the last thing that you'd like to tell oh folks at home? Gosh. Please come. Come down and be part of the history. Come down and enjoy and see. You're not going to see them again for another three years. So, uh, but they're going to be here and in, uh, in three years again, even bigger and better. But come down, be the, be there for the first one, and bring your children. They're going to love it. It's as close to a once in a lifetime opportunity yes. as you can get here. Absolutely, and it's it's historical. What's the biggest historical part about it? Let me ask you that. I didn't ask you that. What's the most, what's so historical about it for people that don't know and that aren't aware of the tall ships? Well, when was the last time you saw a tall ship in our harbor? When was the last time you saw 10 of them? If you look back at historical pictures, there were a lot of freight was brought in on them. My father, my grandparents all worked on those boats on the Buffalo River and unloading logs, wood, uh, grain, you name it. and. Uh, look what happened with our city and all that was all made possible by these tall ships and by the wooden barges. And, and you said more people came through Buffalo than did Ellis Island at one point. I learned that from a historian 
who said that was true. More immigrants came through the Buffalo Harbor than they did through Ellis Island. Unbelievable. Yes, it is. Well, Joe, congratulations to you and your wife and the whole Basil well, family on this I, honor. I, I, I appreciate your congratulations, but we truly are blessed, and that's the way I want to leave it. We're blessed. You are. But please come to the tall ships. You got it. We will. Thanks, Good. Joe. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for your time.